Hi friends, in this video, let's talk about default constraint in the SQL Server. This is one of the important constraints for the real-time projects. The purpose of the default constraint is will help us to set the default value for a particular column when no value is specified. So there are sometimes we don't need to provide a values to a specific column in the current requirement. Maybe there are uh, uh, after some time, so we might be planning to insert some values. So that time we can default that that particular column to a default value. So there are two ways of setting up the default constraints uh, in the SQL Server. So the first one is uh, using designer. Using designer. Second one is using query. So first, let me show you how to set up the default constraint using designer. So let me go to the SQL Server Management Studio. Here, I will be taking one table with the name of employee. If you see the employee table contains four columns, ID employee, employee name, email and is active field. Let me create this table in a particular database. Yeah, table has been created successfully. Now, so let me go to the object explorer. So let's refresh the C shop uh, database. Under that, you have a tables. Under that, you have an employee table. So right click on the employee table, click on design. So here, this is a list of columns. What are all the columns you have provided? Those column names you can see here. Now, to set up the default constraints, right click on a particular column, right click on a particular column. Sorry, let's select the particular column. And at the down, you can see the properties of the particular column. Now, I want to set the is active column as a default to some particular value. Now, here, if you understand my table, so my table is employee table. So I want to say the employee activeness is the employee is currently active in a particular organization or not. But by default, I want to make it as a active. It is a bit type field. So here, if you see one statement here, I selected is active field and then the down, I have a default value or binding here. I'm going to specify as a one means when I specify data type as a bit, it is going to take either one or zero as a values. So let's specify that particular value and click on save, save icon. So once you save it, it is going to take the default value as one. If you specify some value, it automatically takes that value. Otherwise it will take one. Now let me go to the insert query, insert into table name values. So here I'll be specifying the values one zero one comma now let us say tim comma so email id is tim at the rate uh, gmail.com now i am not going to provide is active but here if you see i have four fields but i am providing only three fields let me try to run this insert query so once i run this yeah sorry i need to specify the values also here let me put it as id emp comma emp name comma email okay when you are not providing all the columns to a particular table then that time you need to provide a specific columns as well so here i'll be providing only three columns three values that's the reason why i specified that now let me run this so once i run this yeah here one row is affected now let me see the data which is there in a particular table employee table select star from employee now, if you go there, so I did not provide a value for is active field, but still I can see one some values in the is active field. If you go there here, you can see one because that is defaulted to a one. Okay, now let me try to enter. Let me try to provide is active field also in the next insert query. Let me write the insert query. Insert into employee values. If you are providing all the columns value, so then you don't need to specify the column names. Now I'm going to write 102 comma Gary comma like uh, Gary at the rate uh, gmail.com comma zero I'm providing. So here the default value is one, but I am providing zero. Yes, the data type accepts one and zeros only. Here I cannot give you the value which is other than one or zero. I cannot give four. I need to provide only zero or one. If I don't provide any value, it is going to default to a particular value one. If I provide zero, it will take that zero as a input and it automatically inserts. Now let me run this. Once I execute this, yeah, if you see this, one row has been affected. Now let me see the data which is there in the employee table. How to see the data? You need to run the select statement. Select star from 
employee. So once you run this, yeah, here you will be seeing that. So this is how you are going to set the default constraint by using designer. Now let me show you how to set up the default constraints by using query. The query also similar to that. So the query also as similar as it. The query also as similar as it. Now let me do the same scenario with the help of the query. If you see this, now let me drop this table and let me recreate the same table. Or I can, I can use the employee one table. So let me take it as a same table name with a employee one. Now let me keep it as employee one. Now the same table which is the table name is different but the structure is the same. ID employee, employee name, email and is active are the columns. So let me execute this. Yeah, here this comment success. That says now how to add default constraint to the existing table, employee one table. How to do that? So with the help of the query, I can do that. And with the help of the designer also, I can do that. But I already showed you how to do with the designer. Now let me show you how to do with the help of the queries. Queries is alter. With the help of the alter statements, you can do that. Alter table. Table name is employee one. Employee one. Now add constraint. Constraint. And constraint name. The default name in convention for the default constraint is df underscore df underscore table name. The table name is employee one underscore column name is active. The naming convention is really important while doing the naming actually to the specific object. See, the constraint is the object for us. Now, so what is the constraint? Default. Default. So what is the value do you want to put? I want to put one. For what column? For is active field. Active field. So this is how I am going to set up a default constraint to the particular column in the employee one table. So this is a query I need to write to add default constraint to any column in any table. If you see this, that I am altering the table employee one, and I am adding a constraint on the top of the is active field, keeping default as one. Let me run this. Once I run this, it is going to succeed. The comments are completed successfully. Now let me try to write an insert. Let me insert the queries. Insert into employee one. So here I need to specify if I do if I am not providing a value for exact field, that time I need to specify the column names also. So in the first example, in the first insert query, I'm not going to provide a value to the exact field. There is a reason why. I'm going to specify the column names, especially MP name, comma, email. Okay. Values. Now here I am writing it. Employee ID employee is 201, comma. Now employee name is Mary, comma. So email ID is Mary at the rate of gmail.com. So if you see here, here in this scenario, I am not providing is active field. So let me run this query. So if I run this query, yeah, one row has been affected. Now let me see the data which is there in the employee one table. How to check the data? Select query by using select query. Write down the select query. Select star from employee one. Now let me run this. If you see this, now I have a one record with the name of ID employee 201 Mary mail at gmail.com and is active field is one if you see that but i did not provide i did not specify the is active field but still i can see the value as one here because of this default constraint default constraint is the one which will help us to insert the specified value when you are not providing that specified column value in that queries now let me uh, especially provide that particular column value other than one yes it automatically inserts that value into employee table employee one so here in this scenario i am planning to insert all the columns if you are planning to insert all the columns then you don't need to specify those column names especially in the query so that is the reason why here i am not specifying the column names in the query let me put it this query in the down so you can easily observe the difference between the first query and this insert query now here let me write it 202 comma so here i will be writing chris 
Chris comma. So email ID is Chris at the rate the rate gmail.com. Now here I'll be putting as zero. It means that e is inactive. Zero is nothing but a false. One is nothing but a true. Actually, in the SQL terms, one is nothing but a true. So why why I kept one as so whatever the employee which is coming into the table is active employee in the company. So by any chance, if you want to make it as inactive, but still you want to maintain the history of the employee information, that time you can put it as a inactive as zero. So that time you need to keep as a zero. Now let me run this insert query. It means that it is going to insert that particular employee as a inactive employee by specifying zero. Now let me run the select query. Select star from employee one. Once you run this, uh, here you will be getting two employees with a name as Mary and Chris with a one is active employee, the other one is inactive employee. Then in this scenario, how to get the active employees from a particular table? Yes, it is a very easy. Let's put a select star from employee where is active equal to one. So this is how you will get the active employees in a particular organization. Now there is a one more scenario how to get the inactive employees. So that time you will write the similar kind of query, but you will put it as a is active equal to zero. So these are the two queries which will help you to pull the active employees as well as inactive employees. So based on your requirement, you can add that condition. So finally, so default constraint is the one. So which will help us to default to a particular value when you don't specify a column value in the insert queries. So that uh, a column data type can be anything. In this example, I told you the column, the default column data type as a bit, but you can put it as an varchar, varchar or date time or whatever it is. So, but you need to be provided default value like this. So if you are keeping as a date time, so that time you will be putting as a date time related value here if that in this scenario i kept it as a bit that is the reason why i specified as one or zero here if it is a date time you need to provide let us assume it get date you need to provide like this if it is a date time assume it it is a date time field some joining date joining a uh, date so now like uh, uh, there is a uh, default constant need required on the joining date if if the associate is if, if the person who is entering the data into the um, employee table is not providing the joining date column means that time i am defaulting it to get date so here means i can add a default constraint on any data type of a column so it's not uh, belongs to the specific data types it means default constraint works on any data type that's the point i want to make in this video so in this video we talked about what is the default constraint and how to add a default constraint to the existing table and on what data types you can add a default constraints so that's it thank you for watching please subscribe to our videos thank you